it's the end of June. It's June 24th, 2014. And I know what you want to do. You want to look at my garden and see how everything's turning out. So I'll meet you up there. Let's go. Our first row of brassicas looks really nice. Um, our broccoli harvest is, is petering out. It's starting to reduce a little bit. Our cabbage is going okay. Uh, some pieces have just been completely obliterated by some type of cabbage uh, caterpillar or something. I've never actually witnessed what the thing is. We have a few onions in these rows that are doing just great. I hope that they're going to be nice, big, juicy onions. And we've already started a second planting of our brassicas for fall. More cabbage. This one right here is very lacy. This is the Swiss cabbage. And here is our garlic at the end here. Looking very big and beautiful. Next row down starts again with garlic at the end. This is a cauliflower. Again, just loads and loads of biomass, but nothing really fruiting. I mean, I don't even see where a head is even going to be close to coming out of this. It's just um, leaves as far as I can see all the way down. So uh, cauliflower may just be good for mulch and compost this year, which would be a real bummer because it's one of my favorite foods, which is why I planted three rows off it, right? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, nature. Beautiful, beautiful plants, though. Um, oh, what else is in here? Some celery that's looking okay. And I just planted these contender beans down here. They're a bush bean. In between these two rows, I just planted out, oh, I don't know, half of a hundred. What do you call that? Fifty? About fifty uh, sets of onions for this fall. My hope is I get at least a fifty percent return or 50% harvest on these, I don't know. Um, I've never kind of done it in this fashion before. What we've done this year mostly is just sort of plant them around with everything else in one of those, what do you call them, polycultures. This is a little bit of an experiment and I hope it goes well because, boy, I sure would love to put up 50, 50 onions this year. This guy right here is alfalfa. It's one of the cover crops we put down last fall when we tilled out the garden and created all these beds. Some of it didn't come up last year. I think most of it didn't come up this, that last year uh, in the fall like we anticipated or planned. But the fact that it's coming up now is just as good. Uh, these, these plants have the ability to put nitrogen into the soil through their biology. So it's good to have a little, a little of this in around everything else. Keeps the ground cool, keeps it covered, shares the space, and uh, actually adds nutrients. Yeah, it's official. Our tomato plants are, are way over my head. They, um, they're, they're one of the big showers in this garden this year. Uh, when I stand up, I'm taller than them, so that makes me feel pretty tough to be taller than a tomato plant. So I do that a lot. Right, tomatoes? Don't I? That's my funny joke, isn't it? You're taller than me, and then I stand up, because I was on my knees and I was shorter than you. San Marzano and Amish Paste. Those are the tomatoes that we have going on in this. And I, I don't remember which is which at this point, but it's not important because they're all doing really well. Look at these luscious, luscious tomatoes. These aren't uh, your sandwich tomatoes. These aren't the kind of tomatoes that you'll eat in a tomato salad. These are uh, paste tomatoes. They're gonna be good for sauces and pastes, which is uh, mainly how we use our tomatoes. Here's something fresh right outside the uh, front door of the beehive. Raspberries. Never had raspberries in a garden before. A friend of mine did some uh, volunteer work at a nursery and they gave her a twig of raspberry to, to take home and she gave it to me. I guess they gave her a few and she gave it to me. But it's doing really, really well. I have it sitting in this pot and uh, I already have berries on it. They'll be ripe soon and the birds can come in and rob them from me. Anyone know this monster right here? Yep, that's right. This is the Lolo broccoli and we're letting it go to seed. It was delicious and it grew really well and we're gonna make them into seed for next year's crop. Hopefully, that's the plan. Down in the bottom garden, um, we planted beans here earlier in the season and it was like our first run of beans and peas and they just did nothing. Uh, my wife planted them, she put them directly into the soil and all I ever saw them was maybe like a half inch tall slug eaten sprout. I never saw any more than that. So I bit the bullet and said, let's do it again. 
So uh, I have yet to string up some strings around this pyramid trellis, but I'm looking forward to it being pretty good. In here we got sweet peas, sweet and peas, some lettuce, some pole beans, and some celery. Check out this awesome trellis my wife made out of some sticks and vines that we found, along with some autumn creeper that she used as rope. That's so MacGyver, I love it. Well, this is our cucumber, and it's doing really beautifully. It's already got about a uh, one inch, one and a half, two inch cucumber on it. Um, and this was planted very recently, and there are lots of flowers, and there, we're gonna have a lot of cucumbers coming off of this, so I'm super excited because cucumber's a good favorite food of mine too. Also down here we have a few Brussels sprouts. They seem to be brussling and soon will be sprouting. Obviously you cannot brussel these jimmies. This loofah appears to be almost a completely lost cause. Uh, I think we gained about six to eight leaves since we planted it in the middle of April. My hope was that it would grow uh, to cover this disgusting poison ivy covered fence. Instead of poison ivy, we'd have something productive, but it's not working out that way. Say la vie, we'll try it again. Back here we have uh, sweet potato slips that we planted. They're starting to uh, come back. What, what happened was we planted them and then they died. <laughs> and then we gave up on them and then they came back. It's kind of been the way with these guys. You may remember that there were three of these pepper plants out here before, and now there's only one. The other two weren't doing so well. They, their leaves were uh, bug beaten and uh, they just weren't growing as quickly as they should. So I moved them into a hotter spot in the garden up by uh, what we call the Spanish section. So hopefully that'll do it for the jalapenos. And down here where it was, we planted catnip and oregano. Check out this celery. It's like nearly ready to eat. It'd be interesting to harvest celery from my garden. I've never grown celery before. I didn't think it was possible. I just thought it came from the store. The raised bed garden is sort of despairing. Um, despite all the work we did on the soil, it's still pretty hard packed in here, um, which is a bit of a shame, not just for us, but for these plants. They're really trying to get a hold in there, but their roots are just having the toughest time pushing through. Um, look at the base of some of these these radishes here and they just look so pathetic you know they're just squeezing themselves out of the soil you know what's growing really well here this piece of a walnut tree right here it's a, a stick that I sawed in half hammered into the ground as a stake and it's growing ridiculous along with alfalfa at the end of last summer we planted crimson clover as a cover crop and a lot of that has matured and gone to seed. And so I'm excited to collect some of this seed and replant it again. What is that monstrosity? It's, it's one of those, uh, gosh, I don't know, yard waste bags. It, it's sort of spring-loaded and it'll, it'll expand to, you know, be up to your chest or something. So I decided maybe I'll use it to uh, grow potatoes. It's one of those things you do with potatoes where you keep filling in dirt on top of the stems and you get potatoes all the way down the line, or so I have read. I actually have yet to see anybody really kick it out too successfully. Most potato riches I've seen come from just a, a long bed. But I thought I'd give it a try, so I bought some potato seeds, and those things are just about uh, an eighth of an inch tall right now. So we'll see how this goes. Over here along this fence line, I planted millet. A cool guy on YouTube you should follow is Suburban Homestead. He's one of my favorite channels. He did an ode to millet and just made it sound like such a cool plant. So I went out and bought a packet for $2.50, put it in the ground, and then laid it here along the fence. And then here again, over by the garage. It's a grain, kind of like corn or rice, sort of just kind of in introduced. I'm not gonna do it. Go over and watch the video that he made on millet. It's awesome. Everywhere else in the garden, we've got little players. Here's uh, some sage. There's another little cabbage growing there. Over here, we've got some celery and some lettuces. And of course, there's garlic everywhere. Ajo bajo, man. 
So there you go. There's a look at our garden for June 2014. I can't say it's met all my expectations, but I definitely haven't been let down as this is the first season in a long time this backyard's been cultivated besides just growing grass. Thanks for watching. Check out Lola's mom, dude. You say, hey, I'm thinking about putting some strings on the trellis tonight. She just grabs some string and just goes to it. Doesn't even think about it. She's just nailing it. Look at this beautiful vengeance. Look at this, look at this majesty.